Yo, what up, it's your boy Owen, J.J. Stone, a.k.a. Black Gritty. Welcome to another episode of Gritty Nights. It is Tuesday. It is 9 o'clock. Thank you for being here. Even if you're late, if you come late, if you're here early, we appreciate you. Um, as always, we're not making billions of dollars yet, so all we ask you to do is subscribe on YouTube or subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, share it with a family member. If you get through an episode of We're Not Cussing and your kids are being bad, put the headphones on, make them listen to a show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> make your children suffer. With the podcast, this is how you can educate and help your children out and make them take the trash out when you tell them to. The last thing they want to do is hear your boy BG yelling and screaming in their ear out here in these streets. <laughs> now, the episode title you saw, Philadelphia Fandom, is hard. It is extremely hard. It is the middle of the summer. I'm fat. I didn't eat all day because it was too hot, so I'm, I'm eating some spaghetti during the show. <laughs> Shut up. I don't care. Again, I'm not getting paid. I ain't got no sponsors yet. I ain't got nobody embarrassed of myself, so I don't care what you say. I'm going to eat this spaghetti. It is delicious. Jason will confirm. It was very good. Speaking of that, let me bring Jason in here. Hey, Jason. Hey, I'm back. I know. Sorry back. for uh, sorry for any of the ladies. I'm not Harry. So, so yeah. first and foremost, <laughs> uh, Harry was on last week. Jason was not here because it was his birthday. Uh, again, happy birthday to your face. Appreciate uh, it. Happy Father's Day because we are both fathers. Yeah, I mean, we had a good weekend. But uh, Harry told me today the show was so good last week. He said, if Jason's coming back, I am no longer going to do the show. Makes sense. I refuse to be here. Yeah. I will not be disrespected. And until Jason gets off the show, Harry's not coming back. And I said, Harry, Jason's been my boy since the eighth grade. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a contract grade. holdout. I know. <laughs> and Harry's my brother. So it's really hard what I got to do. I mean, I might have to flip a dip. <laughs> and, 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 and switch all off you know i mean since there's so much tension going on out here in these streets <laughs> harry's such a diva i mean my goodness give a guy a couple muscles and some youth and then he starts acting crazy but uh seriously harry has stuff to do and yeah. it's summertime and stuff is usually slow so we out here living our dream living our best life it's all good in the hood how was your father's damn birthday week bro you was out here balling hey man after all the stuff before that that caused us to miss that other show everything's good now nothing could be bad true story true like, story shout out to connor uh jason's son had a little accident now he's yeah, the man. bionic kid he's <laughs> on the men he's living a dream he's out here making baked macaroni and cheese and, and saving a little slice for his uncle you know what i mean yeah. his uncle had to slide through get a slice he's trying to go to the barbecue that's right you trying to you trying <laughs> to come to cookout uh um how was the meatball how was oh the meatball? it was delicious man yeah so i'm, I'm gonna go over there. i'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. chef it up with you know i mean i'm gonna get him right elbows you know what yeah, i mean yeah. we're gonna be knee deep in this thing got to pass his legacy on Le leah's got the recipe but she refused to cook when i'm around because she's like <laughs> you could do it better than me but um so you missed it last week, and we we kind of quashed it on this show, and uh, we had a lot of comments from people talking about how it's not a big deal. Jalen Hurts um, fumbling in a press conference wasn't a big deal, but you didn't get to comment on it. And since last week, multiple reports have come out that key figures in upper management had a problem with Jalen Hurts' comments towards Nick Sirianni. What do you feel about that whole situation? Uh, it's turning into Carson Wentz 2.0 out of nowhere. The same type of leak, same type of issues. Now all of a sudden, Hertz isn't a good leader. People didn't like him last year. After he signed the contract, he changed, and now he treats teammates different. And it's the exact same story that was used when Wentz started to uh, fall off there after his injury. So it's really confusing as to who's the leak in the building, Howie, and we're, uh, why, though, is what I don't get. Like, are they already planning to make a move and get away from Hurts after this season? It, it makes no sense to have that type of stuff going on right now. Well, they got Kenny Pickett, right? Kenny oh, Pickett's the yeah. future. Yeah, Pittsburgh right? showed he was the future. So today, and again, not to disparage the man, he is, you know, right. I'll give him 40% of the time because nobody's right all the time. But Howard Eskin said, oh, this is a Carson Wentz 2.0 situation. And if he has a bad season, they're looking to move on from him. Right. And I, I say to myself, what you just said. First of all, Jalen Hurts made a mistake in a press conference. My goodness, heaven forbid he misspoke when Nick Sirianni is giving the worst press conferences right. we've ever heard in our entire lives. His opening press conference was absolutely embarrassing, and we didn't think he could be a coach, high school Harry. Then on top of that, in the exit interview, which it took them two weeks to hire him back or, or say they were retaining him, right? he was asked a very simple question. What is your role? As the coach, he did not have an answer. Right. You had two weeks to prepare. 
you have a PR team, a PR staff, and the Eagles are very good at PR media, and you didn't have an answer for what your role was. But now everybody's mad at Jalen Hurts, and you want to create this Jalen uh, uh, Carson Wentz 2.0 thing. Did you know that Jalen Hurts has a no trade clause? Uh, yes, I did know that when he signed that deal. So how is there, how are they going to Carson <clears throat> Wentz him? You mean to tell me you're going to bench a guy who's getting paid $250 million? Was he that bad last year? I know he wasn't great last year. If we're honest, he wasn't great last year, but he wasn't awful. He wasn't awful. Right. They, the, the team fell apart. The team had injuries. He played through injuries. Yes. He played through injuries. It was clear last year they told him not to run the ball as much, and that definitely affected his game. He's way more effective when he's on the move and when he can create uh, plays outside the pocket or even by running the ball to you know, keep drives alive and uh, keep the chains moving like that. And the running backs, could they pick up a blitz? No, they and they didn't even have any type of passing game that could beat a blitz. Oh, okay. So... Didn't they have the second hardest schedule in the NFL? They did. So, all those things combined, Carson Wentz didn't even get Carson Wentz. They were going to start Carson Wentz that year. Yes, they were. He wanted out. Right. He wanted to go. And be, and you paid Hurts early for what? Because of his demeanor, his intangibles, his work ethic, his leadership. Even though we complain about leadership all the time, you paid him this money early for all those reasons. There's one other big reason you paid him early, too, to get ahead of all these other quarterback contracts. You save money by doing that. Whenever people ask why you pay someone early, it's to save money. That's why you're really doing it. Yes. And so I don't believe he's going to get Carson Wentz. It, it, it's annoying because it is the same feel. It is the same essence of the situation. And that's what I hate being in. I'm not mad at Jalen Hurst. I'm mad at the Philadelphia Eagles organization, which is really rare. You know, sometimes you're mad at Howie and you try to like shield it from Lori, you know, because Lori's a great owner. He is the best owner in Philadelphia. And we all understand that. Well, I mean, Middleton's coming in now. Middleton is <laughs> vibe for that. Middleton, took a while. Middleton got the vibes going right now, boy. Yeah. But um, the fact that they're leaking this is embarrassing for the organization. Why did you let this come out so you can have this same problem? It was bad enough what Jalen did. So then you come in and put gasoline on that fire and reignite it. And now we're talking about Carson Wentz with a guy who can't be traded. So it's not the same. I mean, isn't that embarrassing? Isn't that what we should be embarrassed about? Well, I just don't understand. We were, you were just saying how the Eagles are so good with the media, but then sometimes they really aren't. Like, why wasn't Sirianni prepared to answer that question about what does he do? Why was Hertz unprepared to answer the question about Sirianni? Why are all these back channel leaks coming out like this so that we have to hear them where it undermines the quarterback and creates these controversies like that? Like, where do these things come from? It's always so confusing and it always undermines the season before it even starts. Way before it starts. Yeah. <laughs> there shouldn't be any negative stories right now. It should be all about how so and so draft pick is playing really well and looks good. And Jordan Davis is in the best shape of his life. And uh, Jalen Carter is in the best shape of his life. Those should be the stories coming out. It was OTAs. Right. Again. If, if you feel like he misspoke, if you feel like he's a robot and he doesn't have personality, you're not looking deep enough to find his personality and where he gives it. We are a hard city. We are hard to deal with. We are hard to vibe with. And he is what we need. Mm -hmm. Bryce Harper is what we need. Right. I don't know if there's really a flyer besides the coach. Yeah, who's Philly? <laughs> yeah, the coach is Philly. The players yeah. haven't really gotten it yet. I mean, they all brought out dog masks and they had the dog chain and dog yeah. mentality and all kinds of stuff. And they tried. Right. But I didn't find a leader's voice. No, Embiid tries, but he doesn't get it either. He's not quite there. Embiid's never going to be there. Embiid's right. immature. Yep. We're going to talk about that. But those two guys get the media. So if you have a problem with Jalen Hurst, then you're just complaining and nitpicking and listening to, unfortunately, because I call the radio all the time. I'm a radioman. Some of these guys have they have a, a job to do four hours a day, five days a week. Uh, hyperbole uh, 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 represents that market, and it, and it permeates, and it gets people to call in, and it gets people upset. And there are a lot of people that feel that way. There are a lot of people that feel that way about Jalen Hurts, and I do understand that. But at the same time, this dude is good for Philadelphia. He speaks well, and he represents himself well in a place where we're really hard on people. I mean, he literally didn't say anything negative. He didn't say, uh, this coach sucks. He's just like, yeah. You, you at, The thing to me is that you asked a question that doesn't have an answer. How has Nick Sirianni been different? He hasn't called plays since the his what? 
game six of his first year, game seven, something like that. So he hasn't called plays. Right. So since then, from last year to this year, what's different? He doesn't implement the offense. He doesn't coach the offense. Right. So why would it be different from three months ago for OTAs? I, I, I If you would ask me about Kellen Moore, I can tell you how different Kellen Moore is from my other offensive coordinator. Right, which is a legit question. Yes. But asking me, oh, how's Nick been in his new role? What new role? He's still the head coach. He's right. the clapper in chief. Yep. And there's <laughs> a lot Nick of coaches Chir- like that. We've said that before. There's a lot of coaches yep. are in those roles. He's Nick Chiriani. And, yep. and for what it is, I don't like it. I don't want him here, but that's fine. But when you ask your quarterback that question, he's like, he almost like, st- you can hear his voice pause. He's like, what do you want me to say? Oh, wow. He's really involved now. Right. Well, he's not. Especially since it's Cullen Moore's offense and Nick doesn't even know it. So I'm sure Nick's trying to learn that offense and get involved on that back end just so he knows how the system works and how the plays are going to be called. But he's not working with Jalen Hurts day to day in OTAs. But he never has worked with Jalen Hurts day to day. That's not his job. When you when you talk when's the last time well, we passed each other talking to Halls? Because you're yeah. not in quarterback meetings anymore. You're not the quarterback coach. Right. The, but head coaches aren't usually in those meetings, right? Like that's not their job. Their job is to handle everything else, not to be in those. That's why you have an offense coordinator, why you have a quarterback coach. They're in those meetings running those things. So why is it upsetting, Jason? Why is there turmoil? Why is there fire? Why are we upset? Tell me. Because the Phillies are playing so good, so we have nothing else to be upset about, and we always need something to be upset about in this city. That's why. But I... <laughs> We're always looking for something. We don't know how to be happy in this city because we have to watch – Teams like the Boston Celtics win their 18th championship while our other teams do stuff. And, you know, we watch the Patriots win so many. Like, And we're always close, but just not good enough. So we're always on the negative side of it, as we should be, really. If you keep bringing up other teams and pain and stuff. That's why, though. You know, it sucks. Well, it, it makes me so mad. <laughs> it, it does suck. So um, let's just finish up. Any, any other Eagles things on your mind besides the Jalen Hurst thing? Uh, I just hopefully right now you're just looking for everybody to stay healthy and you're wondering why they keep adding defensive backs, right? Why they keep how many defensive backs do we have? I think 15 was the last number that I heard. Uh, I don't, so. under- I don't understand what's going <laughs> I on. I know the last guy they signed is a guy that knows that defense, so he's probably just there as a veteran to help the young guys along. But it's just how many guys do you need? Yeah, I can't, I'm not going to pull up the video because I don't care, right? But that Terrell Owens situation, Terrell Lewis, Terrell Lewis, excuse me, that video was funny though. It was. <laughs> First of all, the comments are the best because yeah. everybody's like, sign that chick. Yeah, because he she, got caught. <laughs> she was hawking him down the hallway butt naked and ran him <laughs> down. And I and I say this. I say two things. One. You want to explain what it is first? Or are you think everybody knows? Uh, okay. <laughs> um, Terrell Lewis yep. uh, is on video running out on what seems to be an escort where he right. paid for service. And well, he, he didn't pay. Well, he didn't pay for service. Right. And he tried to run out. And she chased him down. Now, let me talk to you about some inside baseball here. <laughs> First of all, there were two women in there. So he paid for some double trouble because mm-hmm. the one woman's videotaping. So I'm like, I assume there was two women there. Yes. Secondly, uh, ma'am. How did you let him get fully dressed without paying you? <laughs> Money first. I'm sorry, man. Money first. Money first. Right. Money right. down the table. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go to the bathroom and freshen up. I've seen a lot of movies. I'm not saying I've done it. I'm not saying I heard anything about it. I'm not saying I might know a lady or four of the night. I'm just saying get yeah. your money first, okay? And since you didn't, you sat there and let him get fully dressed with your stark butt naked looking out the window at what, ma'am? At what? Yeah. Okay, then you put him on blast. You tagged the NFL, his mom, the dog, <laughs> Adam Schefter. Like you tagged, he tagged everybody. And I'm sitting there saying, you know you're a lady of the night and your profession isn't legal and you have just literally tagged the internet and world. Good luck not getting busted. I love the spin that's come out three days later. I'm an OnlyFans content creator. Well, that's not why he was there, because I know ain't no video of him going on OnlyFans <laughs> unless you got the video of you chasing Maybe. him down that hallway, because he don't want to be on OnlyFans. I'm surprised he wasn't uh, let go, though, that after that happened. Hey, look. He's not a, he's not going to make the team anyway, so the Eagles should have just been like, well, anyway, uh, so, he's slow. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's slow anyway, so it's might, time to they, move on. They might be trying to bring her in for special teams. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what. I tell you what, I've had her on special teams tomorrow. I'll be like, hey, girl, what what motivates you? How much yeah. did you give me? I'm, I'm going to pay you <laughs> 20 times more than that. All you got to do is chase somebody on the back end. One of those <laughs> Bama boys. <laughs> Ooh, she was hawking. She was hawking. Thinking of the snicker, too. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, less clothes, be, she was more aerodynamic. Yeah, my yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, if you uh, be careful watching her videos, you, you'll see the aerodynamic <laughs> and the wind flow, and her movements are quick. I'm just saying, again, uh, girl, money first, <laughs> but business is business. You know what I'm saying? That's any transaction. Hey! If you're selling something, money first. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, when I, when I when I go to the pizza shop, I say, "Can I have two slices of pizza?" They say, yeah. four ninety five. Right. I pay, and then I wait then for the pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not a businessman. I'm just trying to help you out, girl. Since you put the whole world on blast, and you better be screening like nobody's business now, because I know the cops is watching you. <laughs> I know the cops is watching. They love busting people on Super Bowl time because you know everybody's out here partying, living their dream, living their best life. Uh, Any who's the Eagles? Oh, see, the Eagles are smart. They didn't cut them because they want to be in more headlines. You know what I mean? No, trying to distract from the other stuff. Yeah, they're like, oh, we're not gonna, we're, we're gonna let that roll. Yeah, you know I mean, we'll wait yeah. till yeah, you know I mean, training camp comes and then we'll cut them, and it'll be in the wave of cuts of everybody else getting cut. So, yeah, but that was funny. That was funny. Um, other than that, I don't think anything else is going on with the birds. We're no. just trying. To, this is usually the quiet, happy time we're supposed to have. Right, we're supposed to be optimistic, adding more wins to the schedule as you look at it. Like, oh, I was thinking, I think maybe they win here and here. So we got the Phillies and we got the Sixers. Which one do you want to go next with? Let's do the Sixers. That way we're positive at the end. Woo! <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a good thought by right. you. So clap your hands, 76ers. The, the Celtics have won the championship. Yay. How do you feel about the Celtics winning the championship? That was one of the worst NBA championship series I've ever had to watch in my entire life. It was so boring. Go ahead and talk about it for a second. Dallas played football. so well to get there, you know, and they deserved to be there, but the matchups for them were just completely awful. They had uh, Derek White and Drew could uh, really shut down Kyrie, and he showed up so small for the entire series. And then Tatum and Brown are just big enough to slow down Luka, not stop Luka, but slow down. And then whatever fake injury Luka had when he couldn't shoot anymore became uh, even more of an issue. Luka, so. Luka was injured down. Yeah, I know every game they lost, he was injured. When he shot well, his injuries were pretty good. Well, that's what Joel does. So. Oh, I know. <laughs> now, not in the finals, but you know. But. This is why, I mean, I, Boston was a deep team. That's there's just, 114 people in here. Yeah. I appreciate you all for listening. Uh, let, let's just say we have 500 people that listen to the podcast, the show, the live, mm -hmm. um, more so during in season of football. But all those people, they listen to podcasts like this because we don't say that Luca and Kyrie Irvin are the best backcourt right. in the history of basketball. <laughs> Which is crazy. The I mean, narrative the happened in the last five years. Narrative happened on, on first take, and then everybody ran with it. And everybody's right. talking about it. I was like, I, you know, I don't like the Warriors, but are you going to tell me they're better than Wardell and, and Thompson? Right, they're not. They're not. <laughs> like, And I'm huh. like, and I hate those guys. I, I don't want to give them props, but I'm like, why are we doing this? Why do they do this? Oh, because we got to have a narrative because we have to right. say something. And it's just like, dude, they're good. They're not great. Luca is not LeBron James. Nope. He, Luke is good, though. He's one of the top five guys in the league. Kyrie's redemption arc this season was amazing to see after, you know, he's had the years of turmoil and up and down. He really did play well this year. That's why when they said it, it wasn't true, but it also wasn't really ridiculous, if that makes sense. It was ridiculous right. because I know that LeBron's not, quote, LeBron is a Swiss Army knife. He's everything. Right. But you can't tell me that them guys playing together and having three years of 60 plus year wins and then right. Kyrie getting hurt in the finals wasn't one of the best backcourts ever. If, if right. you wanted to do that, and Luka is not LeBron. He doesn't have any of the defensive prowess. No, none. And his offense is predicated on health and his mood. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much his mood. So that's just weird and annoying to have to deal with. Then on top of that, they had to fight and claw. Anyone coming out of the West right now. It's going to be exhausted. You have to be fully healthy. Yep. You have to be fully healthy. The, the, the Wolves were healthy, but they were young. And it's just like how the Celtics, when they got to the finals the previous year, they were young. So you can get there. You can get close to there. But when you're young, it's really hard for you to really get over the mountaintop and the hump. And the Celtics got Porzingis back. They got to roll through the East mm -hmm. with no pressure, no turmoil. Every star they played was hurt. Every team they played, their star players were hurt. They cakewalked. It was one of the worst NBA finals in history. And it's not because I hate Boston, because I do fuck Boston. Same. But you want to talk about the Lakers bubble chip doesn't matter. People want to say the Spurs lockout season doesn't matter. Seasons like this, when you look back at history, right. no one is going to care about this championship. 
it's crazy because statistically and you know with all their wins the celtics are one of the better teams ever in you know historically but they just aren't right like they probably would have made the finals anyway coming out of the east even with everyone healthy they most likely make it because that roster was deep as hell right they got uh four guys that can score at any time. And then you got Horford, who I hate, and Porzingis, who, you know, control the middle for them. And then they even, uh, oh, man, they get to bring in guys off the bench that can score it. They switch GMs and nothing changes up there. Well, because the GM that deserves all the credit did what? Yeah, he, he laid, went to Utah. He laid, <laughs> he, he laid the groundwork. Yeah, I know. And Danny yeah. Ainge set them up with their cornerstones. Yep. And then you think Danny Ainge isn't on the phone being a consultant and helping him out? It's the same thing with Jerry West. Rest in peace also to the logo. Yep. Um, but he would help out the Lakers. He would help out other teams. He was helping out the Clippers. But even though he wasn't with them, he would still talk to players, talk to coaches. Like He was a mentor to the league. And Danny Ainge is that for Boston. He has Boston in his blood. So you can't tell me that he's not saying, like, yo, if you can flip and get Drew, you know what I mean? That might help you right. in your situation. But oh man, the Celtics were given – a championship, and that's fine. But now, to our reference as the 76ers, the 76ers aren't winning a championship. Not for the foreseeable future. Nope. Joel Embiid's not winning a championship here. Tyrese Max is not winning a championship here. Nope. And I know there, there's discussion, oh, trade Joel. Now all the people that want to trade Joel, we want to trade Joel three, four years ago. Now they will say they want to trade him before he's nothingness. And I say you're going to trade him to do what? Because you still have Maury here. Right. You're not going to do anything with it. Nobody's going to give you a lot for him back anyway. No. His injury history well, is too bad. Like The injury history is the thing that I question, but the, the not getting anything back. I saw what the Timberwolves did and what they got for what, what, what they I'm, gave up. What they gave up for Rudy Gobert. Yeah, but that was one of those trades that everyone thought that was ridiculous what they gave up. Nobody else is going to do that anymore, right? But, You're going to get a bunch of picks that are protected. That's the one thing I hate about picks in the league. The way they're all protected and all that and everything. You never know where they're going to end up for real. Then the Clippers turn around and do what they did. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a sucker board every day. Somebody's <laughs> desperate. Somebody thinks they're super close. You know, I saw a thing that said maybe the Sixers should consider bringing Harden back if the Clippers don't want him. And I'll just, just like, I can't even fathom that idea. So, everybody's like, oh, Joel Embiid said he hates Boston because he was on the inside uh, NBA, whatever, the thing for the finals. He's like, oh, I hate Boston. And he's like, you know, we're looking to add some pieces. Oh, that was Arnold Schwarzenegger. That was, that was, <laughs> what the hell? That was terrible by me. I apologize. I, <laughs> I have been Arnold Schwarzenegger talking a lot today. But anyway, <laughs> he said, oh, we're looking to add some pieces. And he looks directly at, at uh, boy George, yeah. Paul George. PG. And uh, it, it's funny because, dude, are you tapped into the league? Right. Because Paul George in his podcast, when asked about players and GMs, he said, well, you know, we all talk to each other. So when a guy tells you that this GM doesn't keep his word or this coach isn't about that life or yeah. oh, who could he have been referring to? Who could he have been referring <laughs> to? Do you think that Paul George is really looking to come here? No, he's using us as leverage, leverage. Yep. to stay in LA. And if the money's even anywhere close, he's going to stay there. I told you if I was him, I would go to Orlando. If they're offering the same money. I, definitely. Like that's a team that's on the, on the rise where the Sixers are kind of stuck in the mud right now. And do you know the other reason why you go to Florida? Taxes. <laughs> yes, taxes. <laughs> the weather. Yeah. <laughs> the weather and the taxes. The same reason. Well, LA is the re reason people go to weather. weather. But right. the taxes are terrible there. Yeah. But you go to Florida, Texas. Yeah. Nobody's coming here. We've never gotten anybody here. That's why it's so important to draft. Nobody goes to Boston. Right. You have to uh, trade to get guys. To everybody go was traded outside or drafted of Brown and Tatum. Yep. And it's like. We don't have the fortitude. I, people say, what do you want to do? I want to get Danny Ainge here. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Yeah. If Jerry West wasn't dead, I'm like, call Jerry West. Get him to be a consultant for the team. I, I need a GM that can do something. And anybody who sticks up for Daryl Morey is just a bootlicker. He's not done anything. He hasn't created anything. Go ahead while I eat another meatball and tell me about his uh, strategy right now so far. Well, first, he's the Glenn Rivers of GMs. That's We'll just call it what it is, right? He never comes through in the playoffs. Uh all he's really doing is just paying his old Houston guys. They had Sam Decker in, uh, the player they drafted out of Wisconsin, I think is where Sam Decker went. And they brought him in for a workout to look to see if they wanted to add him to the roster. Guy that can add a little bit of shooting, I guess, but he, he's not really that good of a player. And, uh, you know, we did the P.J. Tucker deal. We did the Harden deal. We did, uh, uh, 
was it Daniel House? Was that the other rocket that they brought in? Daniel House. And it's just all these guys that came in and they just don't do anything when they're here. They didn't do anything in Houston. So what's the point of bringing them here now? They're talking about bringing Collins. Yeah. Because he's a lob guy. And I'm like, so let's let, let's just imagine you get Paul George because you have to give him the max max. Yeah. That leaves you $10 million. Uh, how? Well, how so? You talking about after the maxi deal? Mm-hmm. Well, with the maxi deal, they can wait and then go over into the uh, the next tier of the tax thing, which is what they're going to have to do if they want to put a team on the floor that can compete. I don't know if you heard. Joel Embiid wants his extension. Yeah? Yeah. Because he's due. He's up for it. Yeah. I mean, he should so, want it. But. I mean, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, when they have, like, peanuts left over, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, three stars and who? Right. It'll be just like the Suns. Where you're building around three stars, but you have no one else that can play. Then you watch the Celtics, who we just said have four guys that are basically stars and a bunch of role players that are really good. And if this is the problem when you trade Joel Embiid, because you trade Joel Embiid, and if you don't trade him to Detroit, if you trade him to anybody with any salt in their blood, right, they'll win a championship because it'll be like going, it'll be like Porzingis going to Boston. Boston, right. injured guy. Hasn't produced, but can produce when the workload isn't put on him. Right. We know how good he really is. It's just he's always hurt in the playoffs. Yes. And he doesn't have enough help. But right. if he's the second or third, or if he was the fourth guy, that's a dynasty for a team. Yeah. That puts him in that Bill Walton uh, type role for the Celtics. Where he's and, just a playmaker and a creator. And, and I and I don't want to be here. I don't want to live this life. I, I, I'm not happy with it. And it's just. I just want to enjoy basketball again. Well, <laughs> speaking of that, let me just uh, get in here to my Twitter. Uh, as far as you enjoying basketball, yeah. those days are done. I know. While you're looking at stuff, do you want to hear bad news? Oh, yeah, yeah. Willie Mays passed away today. <sighs> like, That's worse than bad news. That wasn't even no, bad. No. Like, I was thinking he was going to say bad news. <laughs> oh, damn. That just came through. Uh, R.I.P. That's what I got. I just That's the, you know, the theory of three they always talk about. That's Walton and then Jerry West and now Willie Mays. Yeah. That's like, crazy. That is crazy how it always works uh, like that. that. That comes in threes. So, yeah. and I had to look it up. I thought, you know. So, I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. I'm going to put it out to people. They can comment. And Hopefully, then, people start commenting. Yeah, nobody's, I, sometimes people <laughs> just be listening. That's cool. Sometimes people are doing that, good. But it is weird. There's 129 yeah. <laughs> of y'all in here, and then y'all disagree with everything we say. I know yeah. we always write. <laughs> right. But I mean, I, matter of fact, don't comment. We write. You know, we don't. <laughs> Steve, where are you at? Matter of fact, where's Steve? Yeah, Doc him. I'm about to start Doc. Well, I said that last week and <laughs> I he didn't show up, and I was like, man, Steve. I was still listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. You said, oh, okay. You did the part. I will listen the next day. You know, I, I told right. you I was busy. I, I appreciate you. Yeah. Um, so uh I was talking to V Tabs uh 1984 on Twitter. Okay. And he was getting on uh people like uh the one guy was talking about the Eagles, and then he went and looked at his profile and he's like, You're a you're a Yankees fan. <laughs> and he's like, Oh, you're a bitch, and then the whole thing goes down or whatever, whatever. And he's like, You wouldn't say that to my face. And I was like, Well, technically he didn't even tweet it to you because he, he he uh edited out bitch when he said right. it to you. So <laughs> and then he DM'd me and he's like, Uh, is it wrong for me to think that all fans should be four for four? I do think you should be four for four when you're around here, unless you moved here from somewhere else. Like Kate's situation, like she moved down here. She's a Buffalo fan, but she moved from that area. There's no reason for her to switch teams because she moved down here. Okay. Right? But like now she's letting Jace, my stepson, like he's allowed to pick which team he wants to root for. He'd be a Bills fan. He could be an Eagles fan if he wants, you know, stuff like that. And uh, there's just certain teams he can't be fans of, you know? Yeah. Well, but yeah, I do think you should be a four for four like that. If you live in the area, there's no real reason not to be. It doesn't really make sense to me. It's cool when you're a little kid and you're picking teams like that, but then usually you grow up and you start rooting for the local teams. So this is what happened and what made me hate the Bulls and Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. You know, I, you know Sean Kennedy, huge Bulls fan. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there when I'm a kid, I'm like, yo, bro, why aren't we just fans of our team? Right Now everybody's got a Bulls starter jacket. Now everybody who's singing I like Mike want to be like Mike. I was like, <laughs> we was just whooping up Charles Barkley and, and hyped about Barkley. Now, okay. So, not, and not saying that Sean switched up, but I'm just saying like a lot of people did switch up. A lot of people did become indoctrinated. They love Jordan. I love LeBron James. So that means I like whatever team he's on, but I'm not a Lakers fan. No, right, yeah. I'm a LeBron fan. Like I can understand if you were a Jordan guy, but once you start wearing Bulls stuff, like you ain't never even been to Chicago. 
like never been to Dallas, but try here right. wearing this Dallas stuff. So that's what makes me say, oh, you got to be stay four for four. You got to just root it out. But at the same time, imagine being a hockey fan and having a kid grow up in Philadelphia and going 30 years without a goalie. <laughs> hey, son, come over here to the Flyers and look and see what's oh, going on. I know. And they're out there looking at the Knights and the Sabres and all the new teams and all the old legacy teams. Make it look and, so easy. And people winning and having fun. And it's like, oh, don't worry, son, they're going to turn it around. He's 10. Yeah. Oh, don't worry, son, they're going to turn around. <laughs> he's 20. Oh, son, they're going to turn around. He's 35. Now he's got his own kids. He's like, son, we are Knights fans. We, <laughs> <laughs> we are not Flyers fans. And I kind of understand that. When you're a Sixers fan, and you go through the drop that you go from 83 to 99. It's like, come on, bro. You can lose a lot of people there. I mean, you literally just described us as Eagles fans waiting for them to win a Super Bowl. Like we waited till we were, what, 35, whatever, 22, because we're young, you know, stuff like that. Yes. Like, I don't, in my dark days when the teams lose and I'm in a real dark spot, I just think like I should not let my kids become Philadelphia fans. I should tell them to root for anyone else because it's so upsetting and depressing because it sucks it does and uh it's just hard that's why i put that title right it's hard (laughs) being a philadelphia it's hard loving philadelphia and at least with the eagles like for our era right so i'm a little bit older than you so in 80 i was one years old so it's like oh okay they're doing something i don't know any better right yeah (laughs) by 90 and i'm 10 years old i'm like oh the defense is crazy you know what i mean you get reggie white you got the defense you get get randall randall's exciting Yes. Then I roll into the 2000s in my four of years of 20s and saying, dang, we're winning all the time. We're almost there. At least you had joy. Yes. So I can understand like sticking with your team and being with your team. But if you are an 87 year old guy and you're still rocking with the Eagles, man, God bless you. Because like you just said, you don't lived your whole life and never got one championship. There's other teams out there that don't have any championship. And Kate, yes, we're old. Yes, we are. But guess what? I'm also old enough to remember four Super Bowl losses oh. by the Buffalo <laughs> Bills. Okay. Oh man. Have the Bills won the Super Bowl? Mm-mm. That's terrible. <laughs> That's terrible. They went to nine straight and didn't win. <laughs> and as far as the, oh, let me just drag on the Bills real quick because Kate's here. You know, just you know, just Kate. We ask for comments, and then we attack. Oh, we sure do. This is, this, this is why we don't get comments. This is why, yeah. people, this is why people don't comment. Yeah. Just get a I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it, the biggest disrespectful thing in NFL sports history to me is that if Kelly would have won one Super Bowl, he would be in the consideration of one of the greatest quarterbacks ever, and he's not even mentioned in the top 10 or 20. And it's a disgrace and an embarrassment to the NFL. That man was amazing. Everything that people clown Troy Aikman for being quote unquote game manager and loser and didn't do anything <laughs> but pass the ball off. Jim Kelly was the opposite. Jim Kelly had Thurman. He had he had the weapons, but he made the weapons pop. He was an assassin out there. And it's just by the grace of Jiminy Christmas and whatever deal he did with the devil that he could never achieve that one shining moment of a Super Bowl. So, Kate. I feel for you because that guy. Pause. Phillies just won in a walk off in the ninth. Woo! Castellanos with the game winning hit. Uh, no, he didn't. Swear. No, I'm double. <laughs> Casty, <laughs> my favorite. Casty. <laughs> um, that's his fifth walk off hit of the year, by the way. Like he's tops in the league in that. He just gets no hits in any other inning. He's the bottom of the league in hitting in every other I know. <laughs> category. In every except other. for he just focuses in when it matters. <laughs> it, it's it's so so i called in you know, and i talked about it the other day and i was like how come he's the only player that doesn't get a day off makes no sense to me it makes no sense like hey go hang out with liam for one day yeah just take a breather man and, it's okay and, and it's funny because i don't know what's going on but every time i say that he has he a walk off yeah it's just <laughs> i've said like put him, like you gotta sit him down mm-hmm. like three times now it's happened with a walk off that's why i said no way walk off because the last time I said he should sit, he had that walk yeah. off uh, double. That's, I think he looks tired most of the time lately, and I think Stott looks exhausted right now. And Stott, he's playing two positions. He's got a newborn at home. They're doing. They were on that long road trip. Like, there's just a lot of factors playing on him right now. So, we're, we're, and he got a big hit today. I know we jumped to the Phillies. Sorry, because yeah, yeah. they won. No, no, that's cool. We'll, we'll come back to Phillies. We got to finish up with the Sixers. Yeah, my bad. Uh, we're good. Um, 
I don't even know where we were. I was complaining. Oh, four for four stuff. Yeah, so I, I do believe you should be a four for four, but I do also understand when you're not in the doldrums of being a Philadelphia fan and you're suffering. But I only understand when you're younger and you're looking to go somewhere else. And I also don't respect if you become a Yankees fan or a Patriots fan or, you know I mean, like a Dodgers fan. Like, if you're just going to, like, super teams, yeah, then I don't respect it. Sometimes I think I want my kids to be Ravens fans. Ravens fans. They got See, cool uniforms. They're good always. You they're, know, they're they're very consistent. My, <laughs> I I um I have my Ray Lewis jersey, yeah. which is got little bleach on it. Uh, that's the other thing too, right now about football and sports. You can't wear other people's jerseys anymore. Now it's like you just now you got to be a four four. You got to yeah, be right it looks bad. I used to like wearing all the jerseys except for in the division. I never wore anybody in my conference or division for any sport. Same. But like I liked having a Vince Carter. You know what I mean? Like I had all I, types of jerseys. I, I had a Pud Rodriguez Tigers jersey. Like I had yeah, all types of stuff. It, it was just fun. Like I really want to Ella Dela Cruz, but now I feel like people are like, oh, black when you wear Ella Dela. <laughs> like, you not see how sexy and electric that dude is. He is right. fun to watch. I want to wear it. I want to <laughs> do it. Got to wear it in my closet in the in the, in the shadows of the night <laughs> where nobody watches. Sneaking it. You know, somebody gonna pop it with a camera like. Hey, just put the money on the dresser first before uh, you put it on. Right. Put the money on the dress. <laughs> hey, that's the, I'm about to name that the title of the show. Put the, money, <laughs> put the money on the dresser. Um, so yeah, to go, just to finish up with the Eagles, I mean the Sixers, they're not winning anything. We're not winning anything anytime soon. And so you don't think they get Paul George, right? I don't think they get Paul George. I think Paul George is using leverage. I don't even know who else is really available. Do you think they end up with Butler? Um, Butler is. I don't want anybody. They, they, they're talking <laughs> about getting OG and Anobi. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, he gets hurt more than Embiid. Yes, and when people talk about it and talk about all his potentials, I was like, he's injured all the time. Yeah, and they he's going to be a uh, max too. What was the rumor? They said, what about Levine and Caruso? A trade for both at the same time? Get you Caruso, who I want, but Levine, who I don't want. I tell you what. Like, right, I, I want the crew show with all my heart. I'd do anything to get crew show. I know, but Zach Levine, he makes so much money. It and doesn't matter. I, I don't it doesn't know. matter. It doesn't matter. I know. It doesn't matter. Do a three way deal. I want the crew show here. I want to wear yeah. a headband and I want to say crew show. <laughs> I just want to do it. It makes me happy. It makes me, it brings joy to my heart. Um, I, and you know me, I have a soft spot for white boys in basketball, which is why people are so weirded out that I don't like Caitlin Clark. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But I love a good old white boy. I love the Austin Reeves. <laughs> I love the um, McCullen. I love McConnell. McConnell. Um, what's our what's our what's our dunker dude from the Sixers? They had to come out for the dunk contest. Oh, uh, McClung. McClung. That's what I was trying to say. McClung. I, <laughs> I put McConnell and McClung yeah. together. I was like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? You, know, you know, you know the white boy. They all the same. <laughs> they all the same white boy. You know. The donkey one, <laughs> not the dribbly one. Um, the donkey one. The donkey one. <laughs> Shut up, that one. I, li I like me a good Caucasian basketball player now. I like it, you know. I tell you what, I tell you what. Ain't no Negro to logo. That's a Caucasian man out there, brother. That was Jerry West. This is I just got to stare like Mike Myers. Right? I just got to stare into the screen, just looking awkward. Uh, the NBA yeah. is not like black people. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah i i just uh god i, I love caruso I don't, I don't i don't know what it is about it but i just i just like his it's defensive prowess he's a good glue guy and um that that's why not, this is why things like that are why i say Bronny jr can play in the nba do you know how many guys are sitting on the bench that average four points in five minutes and never play he right. could play in the nba yeah. if nothing else he could be a, a theonis brother onto the coupo right. that comes out there and clean up time and mop up and brings the ball up to court a guy you never knew or heard of so don't tell me that this guy doesn't deserve to be an nba can't be an nba they draft people all the time they draft number one guys all the time yeah. who are busts his bigger issue is he came in a little shorter than they thought that's where people got a little thrown off on that and people just hate his last name is the so well i would take him yep it's the american way i would take him too because i'm trying to get lebron james right. to come home um all right so sixes are never winning Sixers are never that. gonna win. Never gonna get it. Never gonna get it. Never mm -hmm. gonna get it. Oh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> so it's so sad and depressing. I, you, gotta, I you gotta laugh. Even if they make some good moves, it's like okay, so what? 
I, I don't like this class of free agencies, even when you have the max, because right. one, nobody ever chooses to come here. That's why I said, uh, thank you, Bryce, for choosing me. Mm-hmm. But it, next year, there's so many more players available. Do you think but, they should sign guys to like, you know, uh, overpay somebody like a Malik Monk or something like that for a year, like give them a big one year deal and then just let them go at the end? Yep. Uh, if I'm going to suffer, that's what I do. At least have a plan. <laughs> But you know, Embiid might not want to go by that plan. You know my plan. I play Joel Embiid for home games and rest him on the other games and tell the NBA to go suck it. Or just don't play him until, what, February? Yep. Like, just like, yeah, he's not around. Yep. We won't even know where he's at. Yep. Right? <laughs> I, I need I need some. I need a strategy. I need some kind of implementation coming in that helps second us. second halves only, right? <laughs> something. Just. <laughs> I need something. So uh, that's enough to press about that. Like you're, you're, you're right about what you said. Let, let's go to the Philly. So Casty got a walk off. Yeah. And uh, the Padres suck. Padres suck. We Phillies hate, had 13 hits today. We hate the Padres. <laughs> well, ever since they came out with that dumbass song. <laughs> that's was in. That's was cool. Uh, Those guys jinxed them forever. The Phillies going to drool. That's yeah. was. <laughs> oh, boy. Yikes. No, those are the Caucasians I do not want playing on my basketball team. They, <laughs> they can't be in my drum line. They can't be on my basketball team. Nothing. So... Uh, I, we all knew the Phillies were going to get back on track w- against the Padres, and once they got home, were you upset or worried about this? Uh, the London trip and the trip home? No, not at all. First of all, that trip was ridiculous to have them go to London and then come right back and have to go to Boston and then Baltimore. Uh, guys were clearly exhausted from that flight, even though uh, you know for us it feels like they shouldn't be that tired taking a long flight like that, flying you know first class and all that and everything. But uh, it threw off the pitchers. The rest was off for the bullpen. The guys just weren't able to put anything together. And guess what? They're just going to lose some games every once in a while. You're going to go cold for a little bit. They're not going to win 150 games. Like It's just not going to work that way, right? They're going to win about 100 games. I know they're on pace to win 114, but they're going to win like 100. So there's going to be a spot where they hit a rough patch. And uh, Boston's playing way better right now. Uh, the Orioles are, the what, the third best team in baseball besides the Yankees and the Phillies, I think. Maybe the Dodgers, so top four. And then you have... Uh, they what they split with the Mets and that was a ridiculous game that they should have won. Grace, a little quick thing for letting me eat a meatball. Try my best. Would you forget? What did I forget? What injuries? Oh yeah. So yeah, they're missing their catcher, right? Which clearly threw off their pitchers also. And Turner, who's now back, but he was missing. So you got guys in the lineup that don't belong there. So, like stubs. So when you're on Twitter and you're on social media and you're on Facebook and you're in the chats, Please remember to understand the game before right. you say the dumbest things on earth. We were, we were got exposed. Yeah, no, he didn't. Nola got exposed. Nope. Right. If you know baseball, having your same catcher and having a one of the best catchers in the game matters. makes a difference. Yeah. Framing actually matters. Moving your freaking feet and getting in front of a ball matters. Matters. Calling the pitches matters. matters. <laughs> when you are in a situation when you know that a guy's off and you make adjustments to cover for that mm-hmm. it matters yeah so yes stubbs is fine it's okay but to act like oh, i can't believe wheeler got rocked but did you did you notice anything different oh right <laughs> oh it's his first game without jt right oh the offense is stuttering okay so trey's not in jt's out marsh was out marsh was out Oh, right. maybe that's an issue. Maybe that's part of the issue. And then Clemens, who was hitting good, he's out, right? So you're down to another guy. And then what was the other issue in the, in these games that people were talking about? Well, their coach sleeps through games when they need him sometimes. That's my issue. But even then, what can you do it sometimes? Sleeps through games? Did you not see Topper get thrown out? <laughs> he did. He was three innings late to get thrown out of that one, how bad that ump was. But he still did it. I respect that he got himself tossed because I said that earlier in the game. I'm like, man, you got to get thrown out when it was a stop at bat that ended the inning on a terrible strike call and Topper didn't say anything. I'm like, oh, come on. Like, you got to go. The team needs it. Right? Sometimes you just got to get tossed. So, uh, again, shout out to V Tabs and uh, Fit Dad CEO. They were going at it talking about um, the the ump and and VTAB's mindset was, can't be blaming the ump. You got to do all the other things. And he's like, w- w-, and Fit Dad's like, well, yeah, but the umps were bad too. And I'm like, right. well, both things can be true. They both can be true. Exactly. They both can be true. The ump is bad. Yeah. Hernandez, even though they bought out his contract and they got rid of him, 
he was just the most egregious. He's not the only one that's bad. No, and their best one just got caught gambling. So did he? <laughs> yeah, the best ump. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> so we need robo umps here. Yeah, it, it has to happen. I, I want it to happen next year. They're talking about fears online. I want it to happen tomorrow. I want to adjust the digital frame box mm-hmm. by one inch. I want it larger. Okay. And I want a floating 3D camera on the top view in every stadium. That'd be interesting. And I want Robo. Yeah. I want I want a sky cam. I want the box extended. And I want Robo. Okay. Because the I need the sky cam because there is something to the natural eye of a ball that curves in late and tails and hits the cornerback of the plate. Yeah. So if I'm only going by that box of what you see, there are times where it hits the corner of a plate or it dips down low enough right, and it, late. And yeah. Then. Yes. So I, I need that. I need that top angle view so that I can get a good three dimensional framing for that. Plus but, it'd be cool to see a foul ball, just destroy it. No doubt. Right. No just, doubt. <laughs> I mean, you lose one, you lose one. That's my yeah. thing. If you lose one for the game, you lose for the game. Or, you know, you're smart. You may go to a disposable lens cap. So you just pop it off and then put another one. Right. But anyway, I need that. I'm tired of these umps. They, they, I assume they're all gambling or gambling adjacent. Mm-hmm. And they're just not getting caught. And it's embarrassing for the game. It's embarrassing for the league. And human element, go or don't go. That's where human element is. Out. That's where human element is. The ump stays at the plate and only calls outs. That's his whole <laughs> job. Yeah. Out. Safe. <clears throat> out. That's it. It's just so crazy how bad they can be some games. Like, even ag- agreeing that they are human, sometimes they're just so terrible, though. Like, the ball is, you know, six inches off the plate, and they're calling it a strike. So think about this. The game is shorter now. Yep. But imagine you're sitting out there for three, four hours. Oh, yeah. Y- you get tired. You, In the you, heat and all t- that. You take your eye off the ball. And the other thing that kills me the most is I don't care what anybody says. When you're a referee... We just talked about being four for four. Mm-hmm. You grew up your whole entire life. That Boston Celtics, uh, the black guy, this is the ref for the Boston Celtics. Um, they're, everybody's trying to d- cover up his whole identity now because he came out as being gay. He's the first openly gay Pride Day, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Referee. I don't care about that. I care about when he's in a Celtics game and I see him go like this when somebody fouls or he goes right. <laughs> and somebody fouls and he has to call it. His right. facial expressions, he can't even control his fandom in the moment. And then when you go and look and you're like, oh, well, when he refs, they win 67% of the games. Yeah. When he's the head ref, it's even higher. Like, that's a problem. But, you know, no robo, no robo. You got to keep your human element. No. Right. I'm out with human element. <laughs> I, I want human element um, as a panel, along with people that are sitting in a booth somewhere. And I want analytics. I want AI. I want Alan Iverson discovering and, and discussing all. <laughs> all calls. I need Alan amazing. Iverson. I he need... was the review guy that they went to. Alan Iverson for everything. He just sits <laughs> in a booth tower somewhere like Thanos and he just <laughs> strike. But how would he ring the bell whenever the Sixers need him? Look. Oh, like... <laughs> On his little dingy boat <laughs> yeah, yeah. that they gave him. His little, oh, God. The wrong type of boat. <laughs> I want to know. That, that's what I want to know. Somebody knows Alan Iverson. Has he, did he ever go out on that boat? Because I know he loves fishing. <laughs> right. I want to know if you ever took that little dinky, dinky dope thing out. I would say no. No? That's your bet? <laughs> My bet. That's your bet? Okay. He probably doesn't even know where that boat is. Oh, God. Or it's like in the, you know, in the in basement of the... Uh, no, in the arena. It's in the basement of the arena somewhere, just like covered in cobwebs. So embarrassing. So embarrassing. So, um, but yeah, all those things are involved with how the Phillies have uh, had a rough patch coming back. And they finally get to play at home. They get to get right against the Padres, yep. um, and it's it's just going to be fine. I have taken the mindset and thought process of I'm not going to complain no matter what until after the All-Star break. Right. After the All-Star break, so Marsh has come back, Trey's come back, Trey looks pretty good, but again, it's the Padres, so it's just enough to get your feet wet, you're home, you're comfortable. I want to see what trades they make at the end of the month. Oh, exactly. So give me mm. until after All-Star break. And then we'll see where we go from there. And then I'll start caring about every game, every series, live or die. Because also, the Orioles are one of the best teams in the league. And that does happen, too. Give them some credit for being a professional team. And um, hats off to them, even though we stole that first game, which was an epic uh, overtime game. 
was a great game. What the best part about when they were losing was the Braves were losing the whole time too. So they weren't really losing any ground there that they have, uh, you know, in that lead for the division. Yeah. And the Braves are still losing. The Braves are in a terrible way. Mookie Betts went down yep. for the Dodgers, you know, uh, not that we love to see that, but we're just bringing that up mm -hmm. as part of the stories. Now, as far as that's concerned, here's my other favorite thing. So, you know, again, the information that leaked out from upper management <laughs> is that the Phillies are looking to bring in a starter in the outfield and another outfield bat. Yes. Now that sounds great, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what you'd like them to do? Well, they, they kind of have to at this point. Their outfield is one of the four worst hitting outfields in baseball because Castellanos can't hit. Uh, Rojas, even though we like Rojas, who's now down in AAA, can't really hit. Pache can't hit. Merrifield's been a bust of a signing and with Marsh out. So they really need somebody that can hit for power out there. They don't really have anyone that hits home runs. Why, when you say that, it sounds disrespectful. Well, I don't mean it disrespectful. Disrespectful. <laughs> this is the same guy that texted me a message about Rojas and Stott and told me, look at the numbers. I know. Um, and when you look at the numbers, it's, it makes it's sad. sick. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, we do fully understand that. I, yeah. That's why there, I, there is a difference. Yeah. You know, RBI, I know which one's R, the better player. R, yeah, RBIs matter. <laughs> like, and, yeah, we know, but it's just like, hey, 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 you better get them numbers up, boy. Because that's you, where you're, you can make numbers live if you want. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I mean, Rojas ain't better than you. Come on, baby. Yeah. But um, and they should have sent Rojas down. He was the last guy on the team that had options to go down. He needs to work on his back clearly, and it was time. To, you know, it's not a big issue that he got sent down. I've been sticking up for Rojas just Same. for the simple fact that. He's the ninth guy. Us, right. when we lost the beginning of the season, it wasn't his fault. No. Putting on him is embarrassing for the rest of that lineup, which was healthy at the right. time. Cassianos is batting 20 points lower than him and plays every day. Yeah. And he, because I know we got to walk off today, but yeah. And only because he's a $100 million guy and yeah. he can't get nuclear hot sometimes. But so uh, again, uh, uh, Lady Rojas, uh, another reason to send him down versus anybody else is that the options was the main the reason. options but. and no one else is going to snatch him up. Right. And these well, other could. guys, if you, no, but I'm saying like, if you sent somebody else down there, somebody else would come and get them. Correct. Cause they yeah, because of their options. So yeah. like Pache would have to go through waivers. Merrifield, obviously, Merrifield would just be released if they were gonna do that. Yeah. Marsh would have to go through waivers. Like it would just it wouldn't work out that way. Yeah. And, and luckily there's outfield guys they can trade for this year. Is there? There should be three of them based on the rumors. Yeah, like who? Kyle Tucker from the Astros, okay. who I would love because he kills the Phillies all the time. And I hate him unless he was in, you know, uh, the Phillies dugout. Mm -hmm. Randy Arena from the Rays. And Luis Robert Jr. from the White Sox. Hmm. You say that, right? I do say that. But you're wrong. Oh, no. Do you know why? No. Why? The Mets are, I don't know how many games behind mm -hmm. first place. They're only like two games away from a wild card. Yeah. <laughs> the thing that. I, but they're going to trade Alonzo away. You. What? The thing <laughs> that I, I said two years ago. Mm hmm hey, I love the expansion to Philly sneak in. They're going to get dangerous. And they snuck in and they went to the World Series. Yeah. So I am an advocate of expanding the Agreed. playoffs. But now it's a, hey, you know what? I'm at the bar. It's late. There's only three guys here. Mm -hmm. One's old. One's a baby and kind of have a butter face. And then there's me. And there's five averagely hot chicks. My odds are good right <laughs> my odds are good i feel like That's i got good some analogy. odds right here i got a chance to bag one of these chicks and then a bus of like middle-aged dudes come in and now there's 15 of them and there's only five <laughs> girls and i'm like whoa 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 there's now 23 dudes in here and i got competition that math doesn't math oh it doesn't matter <laughs> but the feeling is right yes. okay <laughs> the dodgers just lost somebody you think they're not in there looking for somebody in the outfield Mm -hmm. everybody thinks they're in contention in the hunt unless you're the white Sox, un unless you're the astros like I, everybody thinks that they're still in the hunt right. who's going to give up something and then who's gonna put up the arms race against the people who really gonna do it if the yankees wanted to make a move if the okay. dodgers need to make a move yep. we we are in the, <clears throat> the phillies are there too they have the right amount of prospects to be able to make a move too we we, we are i'm just saying that everybody is hunting for the same guys mm -hmm. and there's not as many guys as available as there would have been in the previous regime. Right. Now, so it sounds like the Dodgers need more infield. Same with the Mets. The Braves need an outfielder. That's one of the teams you got to worry about. Uh, the Yankees just lost Rizzo, so they need a first baseman short term. So, you know, because he broke, a, I think, his wrist also like bets, maybe his arms, something like that. 
But uh, so, yeah, there's obviously going to be competition out there, but the Phillies have a couple of prospects they could and should move because you can't just keep waiting. Oh, no. The, the, right. the time is now. Right. The price is now. There's, you know, there's, I don't want to trade the kid Miller that they have in their system because he's their best prospect. But look, if that's what it takes, then you have to do it. Like, you, you can't hold on because prospects just rarely pan out, you know? They, they do. Like, <laughs> and especially if you can make, oh God, it, it, it's impossible to say. But the window is now. It is. Because the Phillies are getting older. Yeah. Right. Schwarber, I think, has, what, a year left on his deal, and he's getting older. JT's clearly, you know, getting older, for, especially as a catcher. And Bryce, he'll be here a long time, but he's eventually going to start getting old as well. And JT, I feel like they're going to give JT another contract because how do you not? Yeah, I agree. How do you not? And Unless they can get some good work out of Martian and they think he could be a guy, but he'll never be as good as JT. No, no. And I, what, so what is it? it, it it's become a joke now, but now Schwarber is uh, one of the greatest Philadelphia hitters ever. It's crazy, right? <laughs> like, And it's because of June. If you took June away from Schwarber, he's Nick Castellanos. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, but instead he's one, like you said, one of the greatest Phillies hitters of all time. He's one of the greatest hitters in baseball. Right. And it's because of June. And it's funny because you laugh and you say, June Schwarber, just wait till June Schwarber. Yeah, I wish it was October Schwarber. And then he, <sighs> like, I want to see that then. And and he had, has he had, has it been three multiple home run games this month? At least two, but yeah, it could have been three. Okay. Um, but, but either way, he's on fire now. Always. <laughs> and it, it's like, I wish we were a dome team or I wish we were a, Florida, Texas, California team for the warm weather. He he needs the heat. Yeah, but then it gets too hot, I guess, in July. Right. <laughs> well, he still hits in July too. Yeah. But he just goes nuclear in June. Yeah. Like Jul June, July, August, like the summer, he is steady stroking. Yep. That's what he'd be doing. Then September, he, he cools off. And then, like you said, October, oh, he's nah, nah, some moments, nah. but yeah. it just doesn't get super hot like that. Yeah, not like that. But uh, June is the uh, white hot. July yeah. and August is hot. See one year where him and Castellanos are just on those hot streaks in the playoffs. Oh, God. Because <laughs> Cassie's not going anywhere. Nope. <laughs> and 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 to his credit, and all it might be even be his downfall. He's laying off swinging at everything. Yeah. <laughs> he's so much better than he was last. He looks so much better than he was last year. Last year he was better. He's still frustrating, but you're right. So maybe. His reckless abandon is what kept him afloat last year. He got into an all-star game. Yeah. And now he's like being conscious about it. And he doesn't, his knee's not touching the earth. And you know how you yeah. say it all the time. Yep. That was the thing for me. Like, dude, that's little league. Yeah. Like, I, I understand you missing every once in a while. I understand chasing. I fully get the game. But when mm. your knee touches earth on a repeated basis, right. that's embarrassing. You're, a, you're an adult, bro. What are you swinging bro, at? You can't get fooled that bad consistently. No. So, oh God. They, it, I please, 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 let them make a move that helps us make a move to make a move that gets the move that has to move. We can <laughs> because again, I'm trying my hardest to just woosa. Oh, it's all good right now. It's gonna, it's just gonna be a fun summer. It, it, it really is. It right. really is. So, um, if you're if you're just getting here, we're about to wrap up the show tonight. Uh, it's a random Tuesday in the middle of the summer. And uh, Jalen Hurts is our quarterback. He is not going to get Carson Wentz because uh, Carson Wentz did it to himself. Now, here's the thing. What what do you do if Jalen gets mad with the team and the way they're treating him and he says he wants out? Then we start over again. Then we talk ourselves into another quarterback, I and, guess. And, who, and whose <laughs> fault is it? They're going to try and blame it on Jalen. Oh, yeah. But there would be him and the coach would be gone at that point. But it's got to be someone in upper management at that point if it happens back to back times with the quarterbacks that they gave big contracts to. Yeah. Somebody's not doing their job well. Right. And I finally gave Harry Rosemans parade <laughs> 2024. And he's about to have me sent from because, yeah. again, again, a key, nobody puts their name on anything. I get it. But for key people to leak this out, yeah. it's just embarrassing for my team. And my favorite thing is because, uh, again, you saw last week, but you weren't on. If this was the cap, hold on, sorry. Uh oh, yeah, um, let me fix that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. If this was the Cowboys, no, that one works too. If ah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs>
If this is the Cowboys, we would be talking about this nonstop and discussing the downfall and embarrassment of that organization. Yeah. That wouldn't be something that we could stand here in Philadelphia. We'd laugh at them. Now people are laughing at us. <laughs> when they called Dak a bitch yeah. in, in preseason camp, we laughed about it. And we're still laughing at them this year. We still laugh at them. But didn't they go on and make the playoffs and win the division? Yes, they did. Okay. So <laughs> the drama and the turmoil that the Cowboys right. had did not ruin the season, did not ruin the organization. If this happens, no, it's all going to be on Jalen's fault because of what he said in OTAs. Right. It's not going to be his fault for that. If, if they fall apart, it's not because of that. A matter of fact, it'll be because we find out he can't really throw over the middle would be the thing that kills them. That would be the thing that kills them. Right. Because here, here's the bottom line not for nothing. No matter what you think or how you feel, and this isn't homerism, the Eagles are going to win 12 to 13 games next year. Yes, they are. And do you know why? What's your reason why? Well, you agree to that quickly. So what's your reason why? Talent. They just, their roster is too talented. Okay, so you say talent. Yeah. You know what I say? The schedule is so much easier. That works, yeah. The schedule, Same. the schedule lightened up. Right. So the talent or the schedule, whatever you want to say, they're going to look dramatically better barring any catastrophic injuries. Right. So all this stuff is going to be moot because they're going to be winning. And Nick Chiriani can go over there and ort, ort, ort <laughs> and clap like a seal and get excited and do what he does. And it's going to be fine. But this is, again, the Eagles organization should not allow this to happen. Right. It shouldn't be a thing. It shouldn't be a story because it does make now. Now, how does Jalen feel? You know, everybody said, well, how, oh, Nick Sirianni, he needs to put out a picture with him, right. Nick, for his birthday. Oh, oh, did you peep also uh, uh, A.J. Brown putting out a picture? Of course. Him and Nick. Yeah. Him and Nick. <laughs> did you see Did you see him out there on, on the um, uh, the charity thing where they're painting and he's painting all the teammates yeah. and having fun? Yeah. And did you see him out there on the bike? Doing, he's a good doing guy. The bike challenge? <laughs> oh, is he? Yeah. Is he a good he's teammate? He's a leader. <laughs> is he a leader? Oh, oh, so the smile that he has every single time you see him. Yeah. The guy who wears pink cleats so his daughter can find him yeah. happens to be a good guy. Yeah, oh man, weird. What are the odds? <laughs> what are the freaking odds? I can't believe it. But oh, he's competitive. Somebody's right. he's never gonna play another game for the Eagles. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean those guys. I mean, <laughs> uh now 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 the term has uh, been changed to speculation mm -hmm. as opposed to um assertion i knew after the aj brown story was finished that it was going to switch to hertz by the way that was so easy to predict that he was the next one like that was going to catch it because there's nothing else to talk about there's and, and sometimes that's okay that's why we're closing up the show we had an hour two yeah. minutes in 167 y'all in here we appreciate y'all we love y'all yeah. but at the same time we're not obligated to do four hours of nothing <laughs> so i don't have to say anything that's right. crazy to yeah. make you angry Right now, the only thing that's making us angry is being a Sixers fan. Yeah, well, that just <laughs> you, you know a what I'm waste saying? of time <laughs> and having to deal with the Eagles stuff like that. And you know, again, uh, the Flyers are dormant. The Flyers are in, a, in my happy spot, other than a goalie. It, it's just uh, you know you're seeing that guy in the in the finals now, and and, and, and oh, we had that goalie. We did and have we him trade him a long time and ago. It, and it, okay, so let me just touch on that real quick. Because we don't talk a lot of hockey all the time, and, and that is mainly my fault, and it's also the audience's fault. They're losing again tonight, by the way, the, while you're talking about it. The audience, okay, so the audience <laughs> doesn't care that much, but they do. Right. When you when you go your whole life looking for a goalie, and I know that this was what 10, 12 years ago. Yeah. Twelve. I don't know what it is. Twelve years 12. ago. Twelve. Okay, so I, I, I was right the second time. Twelve right. years ago. <sighs> you trade a guy who was okay, and then people are really upset about it. For 10 years, he was okay and good. He was good. He had some really good years, but yeah, still same. The last two years, he's been great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the last two years, he's been all world. And now, when he was good, you're like, you, you don't even think about it. You don't bring it up. But when he becomes great, you're like, we had him. We could have had him. And people are like, well, he wasn't really. I was like, yeah, but he was good and serviceable. And we have been looking for good or serviceable, just good or serviceable for 40 years years you know why the flyers now. really they do have goalies that are good you know what the problem is right tell them what the problem is they still play the wrong style of hockey because they still have people that are trying to play the old style of hockey up there they still want to you know grind it out there and you know fight in the corners and all that stuff and they don't play the fast style of hockey that wins now and it exposes their goalies because they're a slow hockey team like, well <laughs> like, well well isn't the new orange going to be changing that that's right 
new orange. Is, is, is it going to change that, or are we still living in the Broad Street Bully era? We'll see. So we will see. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> Stay tuned, dude. <laughs> and so, I, like I said, I, there's so many people that talk better hockey than me or we or us, yeah, but it's but, still the point of like, I, I'm so downtrodden that I kind of don't care. And I, I last year we we kind of like rode the wave a little bit. We talked about it more than we ever have, and we, we, were, we were a little bit happy about things, and we wanted to have joy. And then they fell and, off, and, and they there fell was off. Nothing and, to talk about, and we knew, and we knew it was going to happen. Yep. But it was nice to have that feeling. It was, and oh, it, yeah, it's the best. And, and it's nice to have that feeling when you feel like it's real change. They've had a lot of regime change and things like that, but you know, it just feels like they know, they know, they know. Yeah. So it, you want to give them that benefit of the doubt because you want to have that love. But at the same time, your goalie, when you sent me that news thing, I didn't even believe you. <laughs> yeah. When you sent me that thing about heart, I was yeah, like, I bro, shut I'm up. Like, no way. And, 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 you know, you know, I was just happy to have heart. And, you know, it, it's and funny he because was just okay. And he was just okay. And it was funny because you kept reminding me that he's just okay. Like, like you never bashed him, but no, you weren't but, praising him up either. No. I was trying to praise him up because I was just happy <laughs> to have somebody. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Hey, look, I, I, like I said, them, them five women at the thing, they weren't tens. <laughs> D- g- give me the four with a great personality. I'll be happy with that four. I don't need the ten. Yeah. I'll take the four. I'm just I just get me in the game, coach. <laughs> we had a goalie. <laughs> then we had two goalies. And I was like, oh, my, what are we doing? And then I was like, oh, we don't have two goalies. We don't have one yeah. goalie. We, we're the Flyers. That's right. So, again, hopefully we get back to uh, the non- enforcer uh, style as uh kate put in the chat and uh we get back to some fast sexy hockey and we one day make a difference and have an opportunity and a chance but also don't cry and complain that uh we the, don't girl, talk it. the girl that you broke up with 12 years ago yeah. is doing good that's and so funny isn't it has a new family and comes out and shows her the kids on facebook and now you mad like oh, i had her she wasn't shit when I had her. But gave up on her. Though, <laughs> you just reminded I mean? me of something. Wow. I was like, "Did you see?" They're like, "Oh, Jaden Springer was traded to the Celtics, and he wins a ring." I'm like, "Yeah, we also had Drew Holiday and Al Horford." So, like, let's do all the former Sixers on that damn team. But <laughs> and Drew was the one that you know that one sucks. But how, again, how long ago was that trade? And not only that, he's a two time champion. Two time. <laughs> what? We said we were going to end the show on positivity. Then we went to the Flyers for some reason. I- that was somewhat positive. Was I was it? I don't know. I, there's hope. That was positive. Hope was positive. Right, we had hope. And now I'm just <laughs> hope is a dangerous you, thing. Yeah, mess it up. Uh, blackgreedy.com. Uh I'm I'm hooking up the Discord. So keep track of that. If you're if you're watching this anywhere in the comments, go find yeah. the Discord. Join the conversation. We're gonna start trying to get that thing going. I might put Jason on that like as a dedicated worker. <laughs> Because he's a frustrated me and made me so upset. So, no <laughs> Yo, matter, any no, of the cool fights we wanted to watch together just actually happen? Like, I, I, what is I, going on this summer? Um, like, is, it, is it me? Are we the drama? Yeah, what, Every time we me? say we're going to do a live watch <laughs> of a fight, someone <laughs> gets on a plane and almost dies <laughs> yeah, or like, aliens come down. So we're not going to say we're going to watch anything else right. live together anymore. No, nope. Because that is weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, every every big fight you try to talk about to do that for is not happening. So we're yeah. not gonna maybe we just go to a Phillies game and hope nobody dies at the game. Like yeah, rained out. Yeah, <laughs> like what the hell? Uh, so um, is it me? Yeah, Am I the drama. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, like I said, uh, keep an eye out for the Discord. I'm gonna make Jason be in there during business hours. Sorry, Kate, he's got to start doing something around here. <laughs> and um, yeah, maybe maybe we'll just. Dang, I was in such a good mood. Hey, we're going to start watching movies again. Yeah, we got to start watching movies again. It is summertime. We should do that. We just do a whole episode on movies, and we lie to you guys and tell you we're talking sports just to get you lured in. We'll hang out. Call it the movie Um, episode. Wink. 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 (laughs) And, uh, yeah, but just uh, subscribe on YouTube. (laughs) Subscribe on iTunes. Subscribe on Spotify. And tell somebody. Tell somebody. And don't forget, if your kids mess up, Make them listen to this podcast. I yeah. promise you that they will be better children in life for it because they don't want to have to suffer the listening through middle-aged <laughs> men talking to microphones. It's not what they want. No, or they'll fall asleep and get some good rest. It's what they deserve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's another episode of Gritty Nights. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for Kate commenting and other couple of commenters jumped yeah. in with us. But we appreciate all you guys for watching and listening. Have a good night.